Shalom. This De Deacon DeForest Smith um, with another teaching. Today's teaching is going to be um, titled Cut It Off. <clears throat> and it's dealing with the circumcision of the heart <clears throat> and our fleshly desires and things that turn us away from the word of God. We must cut it off. Um, while on this journey, there's many obstacles and things that we see that will um, deter us away from the truth and things that are detestable and abominable to the Most High that we might think in our own understanding that's good, but it's not good at all. So we must cut it off. Starting with um, Genesis chapter 17, <clears throat> verse 1 through 2, verse 4, 6 through 7, and 9 through 11. <clears throat> and start off. And when Abram was 90 years old <clears throat> and 9, the Spirit of God appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty Yahweh, the almighty God. <clears throat> Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. As for me, behold, remember, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And that's what most of us claim to be one a part of those nations but we give nothing but lip service <clears throat> and the lips are a part of the members that we must circumcise and cut it off and do uh, do the, the deeds out of our hearts <clears throat> and our wisdom the wisdom that is given do the deeds of those instructions that's given to us and follow those things through this journey. And it says, um, I will make the uh, make thee exceeding fruitful and make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. <clears throat> and we know kings are instructors, the teachers, the rulers of wisdom, but we are the kings. Um we being kings established after Pharaoh, the king of sin. So those are the things that's going to be cut off from amongst us. And I will establish my covenant between me, between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a guide unto thee and to thy seed after thee. <clears throat> and verse 9 And Yahweh said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant <clears throat> which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 11 through 13 and 15 through 16. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Verse 11 through 13 and 15 through 16. And the spirit of God said unto me, arise, take thy journey before the people <clears throat> that they may go in and possess the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. And now Israel, the prospects so-called, what does the spirit of God, thy God, require of thee, but to fear the spirit of God, thy God, 
to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the spirit of God, thy guide with all thy heart and with all thy soul. This is the requirement of trying to be an Israelite, a true Israelite being of Israel. These are the qualifications that we must possess <clears throat> and must be willing to do, freely willing to do with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength to keep the commandments of the Spirit of God and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Because once we do this, we start circumcising ourselves and living not for ourselves, but living for the word of God, through the word of God, through his instructions, and letting him guide us. Only the spirit of God, verse 15, only the spirit of God had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. And this is a reward, one of those tokens. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked. And that's the instruction. Romans chapter 9, verse 6 through 8. And I don't know how many people are going to actually do it, but the Bible tells us it's only going to be a few. So all those people, thousands of soldiers that's in those camps that's running after doctrines of men they need to come out of those camps and circumcise their foreskin of their heart and be no more stiff necked because they're being led astray by the precepts of men and not the precepts of of remembrance of this book Um, Romans chapter 9 verse 6 to 8 not as though the word of Yahweh have taken none effect because some are just lost in pride some just won't come to the faith because they believe they got another faith that's better they lean to their own understanding and they believe what they have is better than was the greatest thing on earth and the word that comes from from on high they despise and they will be cut off of that for they are not all Israel which are of Israel neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children but in Isaac that token shall thy seed be called that is, they which are the children of the flesh, that do the works and the deeds of the flesh, that have carnal minds, those that keep the precepts of men and the doctrines of vanity, doctrines of devils. These are not the children of Yahweh, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed that keep that covenant. Psalms chapter 24, verse 1 and 3 through 6. The earth is the spirit of God and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Who shall ascend into the hill of the spirit of God? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands <clears throat> and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, because they circumcised and they following uh, the the guide, the light of the guide of light, the guide of salvation. He shall receive the blessing, the teachings and doctrines of righteousness from the Spirit of God and righteousness from Yahweh of his salvation, the guide of his salvation. 
This is the generation of them that seek him. This is the generation of Abraham. That seek thy face, O Jacob. So we're going to circumcise that flesh and come into the knowledge and wisdom of, the, of remembrance of our forefathers, Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. Numbers chapter 15, verse 2 through 13, and verse 22. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land, when you be come into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you and will make an offering by fire unto the spirit of God. So that desire, we're going to make the, a willful offering of desire by desire. That's going to be our desire a burnt offering or a sacrifice in performing a, a vow or in a free will offering or in your solemn feast to make a sweet savor unto the spirit of God of the herd or of the flock. Then shall he that offered, offered his offering unto the spirit of God bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour Ming mingled with the fourth part of an hen of oil, which is all spiritual, talking about doctrines and teachings and the anointment of wisdom, and the fourth part of an hen of wine, which is that faith, for a drink offering shalt thou prepare with the burnt offering or sacrifice for one lamb. So that's the living sacrifice of your body. <clears throat> Are for a ram, thou shalt prepare for a meat offering two tenth deals of flour mingled with the third part of an hen of oil. And for a drink offering, thou shalt offer the third part of an hen of wine for a sweet savor unto the Spirit of God. And when thou preparest a bullock for a burnt offering or for a sacrifice in performing a vow or peace offering, offerings unto the Spirit of God. Then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering of three tenth deals of flour mingled with half an hen of oil. And thou shalt bring for a drink offering half an hen of wine for an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the spirit of God. Thus shall it be done for one bullock or for one ram or for a lamb or a kid. According to the numbers that ye shall prepare, so shall ye do to every one according to their number, the number of Israel. All that are born of the country shall do these things after this manner, an offering and offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Spirit of God. Verse 22. And if you have erred and not observed all these commandments which the Lord hath spoken unto Moses, so we must understand this is a parable and a similitude of things to come. So we must precept diligently and cut off our fleshly understandings and come into the house of knowledge, the house of understanding where wisdom dwells so it could dwell in you. And I'm a, and we know by precepts that Hebrews chapter ten, verse one through ten, because the doctrines of men will tell you that you still have to make those sacrifices on the on the uh, on the solemn assemblies on on the feast days, Passover and all these other high, um, feast days that the spirit of God has appointed us for learning and not for carnal vanity. For the law 
having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things. So we're not the we're not supposed to be doing the very image of these things. Can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect because we must be perfect in faith and wisdom and things that we see is not a part of faith but we know the expectations to come of salvation it should be what our faith should consist of the expectation of the hope um in verse 2, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because if you got that faith, you, you believe one time it's planted in you, then you you going to do the deeds of that word through your faith, which is going to be your works to make that seed grow. And then the expectations is that it's going to be a goodly seed, a goodly plant. At the end, and he'll you'll be accepted. Uh, these are our expectations of our salvation, because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins, because it should be cut off. It should be circumcised. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year, because you're not circumcised and you haven't cut off those deeds. So you think. You can get another sacrifice, another goat, another sheep, another bullet out of the out of your um, storehouse or out of the field, and go sacrifice it for your for your offering. But that ain't gonna work, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. He said, sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. So these, Moses was really instructing us on uh, making a sacrifice of ourselves. It was a similar to of us and what we instructions on what we need to do to circumcise and cut off our fleshly desires and, and go into God's will. But a body as thou prepared me and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Once we come to that remembrance to do thy will, O Yahweh. Above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not neither have pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, remember, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which we are all sanctified, separated through the offering of the body of salvation, the anointed one, our Lord and Savior. Um, Christ the Messiah, so, um, Yahweh Shai the Messiah, once for all. Exodus chapter 33, verse 5 through 7 and 12 through 16. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, um, Exodus 33 through 5. For the Spirit of God had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come into the midst of thee in a moment <clears throat> and consume thee. Therefore now put off the, thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. So this is where the party begins. The sword is about to come down. Zephaniah chapter 1. And it shall come to pass 
<clears throat> in the day of the Spirit of God's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So they're going to be clothed, they're going to be arrayed in strange apparel, these strange doctrines, commandments of men. And uh, we're going to go back to Exodus 33, verse 6. So we're going to, um, from those instructions that was given from Moses, I'm going to go back to 5. For the Spirit of God hath said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And Zephaniah is giving us a warning that it shall come to pass in the day of the Spirit of God's sacrifice that he will punish the princesses and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So those are the ornaments that he told us to put off, but some are going to be stiff-necked. And some ain't going to circumcise their hearts and come into the knowledge of truth and shed off those strange apparels. But we see here in verse 6 that some did. And the children of Israel stripped. So these are the children of Israel. Those that made it, that circumcised the flesh, the descendants of Abraham and Isaac stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Oreb, and Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, without the other people that were still in the camp, still in those bondages, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. The, and it came to pass that everyone which sought, so everyone which sought the Spirit of God so everyone which sought, so it's not talking about everybody, but everyone, one by one, which sought the Spirit of God went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. So some was stayed in the camp, and some sought the Spirit of God without the camp. They cut it off, that camp doctrine. And Moses said unto the Spirit of God, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not. Let me know whom thou will send me with me, because it ain't none of our business. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. And that's all we need to know. Here is the word. Be instructed and get the comfort from the comforter now therefore i pray thee if i have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way so this is our com our confessions and our prayers our petitions that i may know thee that i may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people and he said my presence shall go with thee so that's the token christ gonna be with us emmanuel and I will give thee rest because he is our rest. Once we come into him and he abides in us, we circumcise the flesh and live, dwell in the spirit. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence because we only move when the spirit of God guides us to move. Other than that, we're going to stay on our rock. And stay still because you might get cut off, move the wrong way. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, cut off, holy, I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? So you must separate, cut yourself off from the worldly lust.
vanities of this world can't be a part of this world because the world is going to be cut off in the end and destroyed. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 4 through 6 and 8. And we ain't left the party yet. Yahweh still want to party. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the Chimerans with the priests, those that teach vanity and doctrines of devils. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, by the spirit of God and that swear by Malcolm. And them that are turned back from the spirit of God and those that have not sought the spirit of God nor inquired for him because they got their own feet. They got their own hands and their own eyes. But we must circumcise those things. We must cut off those members if it is leading us the wrong way. If it's turning us back from the spirit of God and and those things are not of of Yahweh because we are we haven't sought him with our whole heart, mind, soul and strength. Verse eight. And it shall come to pass in the day of the spirit of God sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such are clothed with strange apparel. <clears throat> Joshua chapter one, verse seven through nine. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, the instruction, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. And he's going to speak to us in parables and dark uh, speeches. So we must break it down with the precepts and circumcise our own understanding and cut it off. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithsoever thou goest. Verse 8, this book of the law of instruction shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Because if we don't, the adversary is out there seeking us because we're not seeking the truth, not seeking the most high, not seeking the light. So the light I mean, the darkness and the flood will overwhelm you if you depart from, from the light and from that rock that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the spirit of God, thy guide, is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. So we must circumcise that fear. Verse 2. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, separated, for I, the Spirit of God, your guide, am holy, separated from all darkness, all iniquity, all transgressions. He's, a, he's separated from anything in this world that we can see. He's separated from all vanities. So that means if those things are dwelling in you, you must circumcise them or he's going to be separate from you. And at the end, you will be destroyed. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 4, 
and seven through ten. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in the anointed one of salvation, Christ Jesus, the Messiah, Yahweh, our Lord and Savior, the Spirit, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So that's how you know the churches of today, those buildings, those gathering places of, of hell are part of the condemnation because they are not full of the truth and there's no truth in there. And Christ does not dwell in there. So let's read it again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So if you are so if you are in those buildings, Christ does not or is not in that in those buildings. So condemnation is in there. I hope we got it. Who walk not after the flesh, which they teach nothing but fleshly desires and precepts of men, theology but after the spirit and the spirit is not in there because it's in a, a building. The spirit dwells in us. So if you're, so if you're part of, of Christ and the spirit that dwells in you, you can go out and teach. You can gather with, the, with another because there is no condemnation. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life and the anointed one of salvation have made me free from the law of sin and death from those works, the deeds of the flesh. Because once you come in the knowledge of the truth, you're going to work, you're going to walk and live and work a, a contrary to the law of sin. You're going to do the covenant of life which is loving him with all your soul, mind, strength, and through your works. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, keeping those ordinances of carnal thinking and carnal worship, God sending his son, own son, his servant, which is Christ the Spirit, in the likeness of sinful flesh into your body to guide you, to give you wisdom and for sin to circumcise your heart and give you a heart of understanding, condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. The light going to shine if you let it who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And that's how you're going to let it. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh, our God. You can't walk, have two masters. For it is not subject to the law of God, of Yahweh. Neither indeed can be. Because the carnal mind is enmity unto God, uh, to Yahweh. And he can't look upon unrighteousness. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. He don't dwell in the flesh he don't he don't want to save flesh he want to save your spirit the thing that belongs to him but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his because he's condemned <clears throat> he's in condemnation in those buildings because you're not going to have the spirit of wisdom. You're not going to have the spirit of understanding to come out. Because you're going to be in darkness. And if Christ be in you, 
the body is dead because of sin. It's circumcised. It's cut off. It needs a host. But if it's cut off, it's dead. But the spirit is life because of righteousness, because of that word, which richly edifies us day by day to guide us and counsel us unto his righteousness. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 10 through 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 10 through 20. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Spirit of God, thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law of instruction. And if thou turn unto the Spirit of God, thy God, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment, which I commanded thee this day, is it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It's right here in this book, instructions. It is not in heaven that thou should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it <clears throat> and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us so we don't have to go to Jerusalem, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. That's the word, the seed that's planted in us from the beginning. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love, to promise, to trust, to keep the covenant of the Spirit of God thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandment. <clears throat> and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and the spirit of God, thy guide shall bless thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, be stiff necked, be uncircumcised so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, which you see us doing to this day very day in those buildings that's on every corner I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish so you're going to be cut off from the branch from the tree of life and then you're going to wither away you're going to be perishable and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land because once you cut a little piece, sever a piece of, of a rose tree, of a rose bush, you could take a piece of the arm off and it'll last for a little while. You put it in that false water, that false jar. But it's, it's separated from life, from its life and that root rooted in, in the ground. And it's going to wither away in a couple of days. It's going to fade away. And that's the same similar to he given us. Um, whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. So are we going to be that piece of that rose? That's, that was cut and put in another house for for its beauty <clears throat> or are you going to be part of that the tree the bush and, and be able to keep growing and grow and grow that thou mayest um, verse 20 uh, I'm, oh I'm sorry uh, let's go back to 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life and both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the spirit of God, thy guide. And thou, that thou mayest obey his voice 
and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of the, thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Spirit of God swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Now, um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 1 through 9. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments, the teachings and doctrines, which I teach you, which thy voice, the word, for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land, which the Spirit of God, thy God, of your fathers giveth you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Spirit of God, your God, which I command you. And it's funny because the camps, they add, talking about spaceships and giants and all type of stuff. And the Christians, they subtract, saying we don't have to do the things of the law. So both of those is right there. Your eyes have seen what the Spirit of God did because of Bel Peor for all the men that follow Bel Peor the spirit of God thy God have destroyed them from among you and following other men is the same thing they doing in these camps in these Christians religion places but ye that did cleave unto the spirit of God your God we cut it off we circumcise that are alive every one of you this day. And that's what our expectations of our hope is. That's what our faith is. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, <clears throat> even as the Spirit of God, my guide, commanded me that you should do so in the Lamb, whether you go to possess it. Keep, therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. But we don't hear that. We don't hear that at all. We've never heard that because we never have kept this word. We never have wisdom. So once it comes to you, you must keep it and cut off everything else. So we can be that wise people and that great nation that he want us to be. For what nation is there so great who have Yahweh, that God, so nigh unto them as the Spirit of God, our guide, is in all things that we call upon him for. So he's here for us. Why we can't be there for him to show his glory. And his praise and worship him in spirit and truth and do the things that are required in this instruction book in our book of remembrance and come to the book of to to the remembrance of knowledge and wisdom and repent and what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments teachings and doctrines so righteous as all this law this instruction which I said before you this day, but some going to choose death instead of choosing life because he set the plumb line before us. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget which we've done by doing 4th of July, Christmas, Easter, Halloween, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Valentine, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Because all those things are going to get you destroyed. And we see it in this book, The Vanities of Life. 
and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life because we must meditate in his word and be guided by that but teach them thy sons and thy sons sons Genesis chapter 9 verse 11 So we must cut off the things of this world and come into the knowledge of truth. Verse 11, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Because the comforter is going to be here to instruct us. And all isn't going to fall by the wayside. Some will circumcise their flesh and come into the ark. Psalms chapter 78, verse 5 through 8. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of Yahweh, but keep his commandments. Because if we don't, we're going to be cut off. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 30 and 31. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. And this is how we stay holy and separated. I am the spirit of God. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the spirit of God, your guide. And that's what dwells in those buildings. We must cut off. And those religious sects, we must cut it off. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. We must cut off those of no understanding. Those that are in darkness, trying to teach you about the light when they in darkness. Behold, remember, the days come, says the Spirit of God, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Spirit of God. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Spirit of God. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their guide and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, because that word that's in you going to teach them, saying, know the Spirit of God. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Spirit of God. For I will give their, their iniquity, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Because it's all that's going to be cut off. 
Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12 through 13. Wherefore, for that reason, salvation also, that he might sanctify the people with his own life, his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, for that reason, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22 verse 13 through 17. Verse 13. Talk not much with a fool and go not to him that have no understanding. Beware of him, lest thou have trouble. And thou shalt never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him, and thou shalt find rest, and never be disquieted with madness. What is heavier than lead? <clears throat> and what is the name thereof but a fool? Sand and salt and a mass of iron is easier to bear than a man without understanding. And that man, man or woman. <clears throat> As timber girt and bound together in a building cannot be loose with shaking, so the heart that is established by advised counsel shall fear at no time. And that's why I told y'all to circumcise that fear. A heart settled upon a thought of understanding is as a fair plastering on a wall on the wall of a gallery. Tobit chapter 4, 18 through 19. Tobit, uh, verse 18. Ask counsel of all that are wise and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Bless the creator thy God always and desire of him that thy ways may be directed and that all thy paths and counsels may prosper for every nation have not counsel. But the creator himself giveth all good things, and he humbleth whom he will, as he will. Now, therefore, my son, servants, remember my commandments, neither let them be put out of thy mind. So don't let that be cut off. The understanding and the wisdom, but desire him and, and cut off your own desires and lust. Matthew chapter 18 verse 8. Wherefore, for that reason, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, Cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Genesis chapter 17, verse 13 through 14.
verse 13. He that is born in thine house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man, child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Isaiah chapter 55, 1 through 3. Verse 1, ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that have no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. <clears throat> so you see the separation between doctrines of men and the doctrines of faith. One is free and one you have to buy. So we must cut off those fake false prophets that that divine for money and that worship filthy lucre. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Because if you hearken into him, you know not to uh, give your money for his word. Because all you got to do is go search out yourself. Which the new covenant showed that no man should teach you. Because that word going to be planted in you. And that's going to be the, your desire to search, search and seek him out through his word and and book of remembrance <clears throat> incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David his beloved um, 1st Kings chapter 3 6 through 14 And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, the beloved my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. So he, he circumcised, he cut off all the vanities of this world. And thou hast kept for him his great kindness, that thou hast given him a son, a servant, to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Spirit of God, my guide, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counted, nor multiplied multitude for multitude give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern people between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people and the speech pleased the creator that solomon had asked this thing and yahweh said unto him because thou hast asked this thing and has not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself. So he wasn't about himself. He wasn't a covetous. Nor has asked the life of thy enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment, teachings, and doctrines. Behold, remember, I have done according to thy words. Lo, 
I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. So he circumcised his that his heart of flesh and gave him a, the spirit of Christ so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all the days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. So we got to get, get circumcised and stay cut off from vanity and walk in the ways of Christ all the length of thy days. All, um, so he can uh, lengthen our days, which is going to be eternity. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 1 and 3. So that was his sacrifice right there. Uh, Solomon did. He didn't sacrifice a bullock or a lamb. He sacrificed himself and gave himself to the Lord as a, a vessel, as a servant for the wisdom of, of God to do the spirit of God to dwell in him and he be obedient to the word um verse 1 but thou O God O Yahweh are gracious and true long suffering and in mercy and in mercy ordering all things for to know thee is perfect righteousness because we must know him to be perfect and um, the law is a shadow of things to come which never made us perfect by sacrificing but if we know him and he dwells in us we given our bodies sacrificed our body as a um, sacrifice then we can be perfect through the will of him yea to know thy power is the root of immortality second timothy chapter 2 verse 1 through 7 Thou therefore, my son, be strong, and in, in the grace that is in the anointed one of salvation, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach you to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of salvation, the anointed. Yahweh Shai the Messiah, no man that war entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. So he's going to cut ourselves off, separate, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So we're going to be holy like our, our captain is holy. Our commander is holy. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. And that's our, our faith. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits, which is wisdom. Consider what I say, and the creator give thee understanding in all things. So do we consider to circumcise our hearts and our fleshly thoughts so he can give us understanding in all things uh, John chapter 7 verse 40 and 43 
Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Have not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, of his beloved, and out of the town of Bethlehem, where the beloved was? So there was a division among the people because of him. Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 16 through 24. As I live, says the creator, thy God, surely in the place where the king dwelleth that made him king, whose oath he despised and whose covenant he break, even with him in the midst of Babylon in the confusion, he shall die. Neither shall Pharaoh with his mighty army and great company make for him in the war by casting up mounts and building forts to cut off many persons. Seeing he despised the oath by breaking the covenant when he when lo, he had given his hand and and have done and have done all these things, he shall not escape. Therefore, thus says the creator, thy God, as I live, surely mine oath that he have despised and my covenant that he have broken, even it will even it will I recompense upon his own head. And I will spread my net upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare. And I will bring him to Babylon, and will plead with him. Therefore, his trespass, that he hath trespassed against me. So, through every action, there's a reaction. And if we don't circumcise ourselves, or cut off the things, our desires, this will happen to us. And all his fugitives with all his bands shall fall by the sword because you still connect it. You ain't cut off those bands. And they that remain shall be scattered toward all winds. And you shall know that I, the Spirit of God, have spoken it. Thus says the Creator, thy guide. I will also take of the highest branch of the high cedar and will set it. I will crop it off from the top of his young twigs, a tender one, and will plant it upon a high mountain and eminent. In the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it, and it shall bring forth boss and bear fruit and be a goodly cedar, and under it, shall dwell all fowl of every wing in the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell and all the trees of the field shall know that I the spirit of God have brought down the high tree have exalted the low tree have dried up the green tree and have made the dry tree to flourish I the spirit of God have spoken and have done it So he going to cut off some things and he going to plant some things also. So we must choose which side of the plumb line we going to be on. And cut off the things that don't please the most high. Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 through 40. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword, which is going to cut the left side from the right side of the plumb line. 
For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household, because we all in the same field. It's just one on one side of the plumb line, and the and the other one on the other side. Righteousness versus wickedness, the circumcised versus the uncircumcised, the faithful versus the unfaithful, the fools versus the wise, or the fools versus the prudent. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So we must cut that off. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross, suffering unto death, and follow after me, and bear his reproach, is not worthy of me. <clears throat> he that findeth his life shall lose it. So he that, that don't cut that life off of vanity shall lose it the eternal life and he that loses his life this life of vanity shall find eternity he that receiveth you receiveth me the words that's coming out of our mouths the words of truth the words of righteousness that don't come from us but comes from above that was sent as a gift and planted in our hearts and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me John chapter 8, verse 34 and 38 through 42. Yahweh Shai answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Verse 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Salvation said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham, be circumcised, and walk uprightly in the faith that Abraham had to go from his people, from the ungodly, and come into his own and be the producer of children of the works of Abraham. But now... You seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of Yahweh, my God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even Yahweh. So they want to lie. Salvation said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from Yahweh. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. That word, that's planted, that gift. And we only going to speak the words of truth. We ain't going to speak our own vanity like they did. So we must cut them off cut them with the sword, the word of our mouth. John chapter 15 verse 19 through 21. And we must also understand that the, the world is going to cut us off so we can be separated and we must not desire to go back into that world once we are cut off. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So he 
he picked this and planted us out of the world into his goodly place and into his into his garden. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. So we going to bear his reproach. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Those are the ones that circumcised and not stiff necked and humble themselves to hear the knowledge of truth. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. They're not circumcised. That they don't have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So they're not going to believe. They're not going to have the faith. They're not going to be able to grow that seed that's within them. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 through 12. And that's why Yahweh shows us that parable of, of, the, of the seed being the word and what, what happens to the word when it's choked out or when it's despised or when it's thrown, not taken seriously in our hearts, not grown with faith. Um, verse 1 who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the spirit of God revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground he hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Yahweh and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, for our example that we must also bear those and bear those uh, reproaches that he had. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed because we comforted when we see our brethren going through that. And we also must pick up our cross and go through the same thing because Um, those that endure to the end will will be saved, and it's a we going through the wilderness, and we must they're gonna try to cut us off, but we must bear and keep pushing and cut him cut them off, and don't look back. Keep pushing. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But once we find that to come back, we must stay on that righteous path. And the spirit of God have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Spirit of God to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering, his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, 
and the pleasure of the Spirit of God shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So he kept the law of Moses, the sacrifice. John chapter 15, verse 22 through 24. And 26 to 27. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. So they they wouldn't have had to came to the knowledge of sin if we wouldn't have the truth come to us so we can distinguish between the two. But now they have no cloak for their sin so that we must put off those strange apparels and discern from good and bad which apparel he gave us and which apparel was our own. He hath he that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But when the comforter, verse 26, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 26. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. So he gave us this job, this occupation. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And those are the fruits that we must bear, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Because there's no condemnation to those that's in Christ. So we can assemble and give, exhort one another. But some, as the manner of some is, they're going to forsake Christ. And they're going to assemble unto condemnation. But exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So circumcise yourselves. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And we are not Abraham's seed. Romans chapter 8, verse 13 through 30 and 35 through 39. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 
For as many as are led by the spirit of Yahweh, though his instructions and his word, they are the sons, the servants of Yahweh. Because we're going to distribute this word, righteousness and, and faith through his word and become a loyal servant, obedient servant. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. Of Yahweh. Because we separated. We cut off from those of the world. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, of Yahweh, and join heirs with Christ. So he going to dwell in us, and he dwells in the Father, and we all going to be one member, one family, one church, one body. He's our head, and God is the head of Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him. That we may that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectations of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of Yahweh. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. We're going to be separated. We're going to be cut off. Cut off from wickedness and delivered unto righteousness, unto his godliness. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body, because we cut off, but we know we got a body to come into. He's going to graph us. He's going to comfort us and heal our wounds from where we was cut off from. For we are saved by hope. The expectations of the things to come of our set salvation. But hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth. Why doth he yet hope for? Because we can't see the spirit. So that's why we hope for it. We can't be in his business. We just got to hope and have faith. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we the, with patience wait for it. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for, confess for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that search the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Yahweh and we know that all things work together for good to them that love that promise that keep the covenant of Yahweh to them who are the called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow, he also de did pre predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, to have that light, that he might, might be the firstborn among many, many brethren. So we're going to be part of that generation. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called together. Whom he also, and whom he also brung together, them he also justified, 
and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Who shall separate us from the love of the, of the anointed Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. We cut off. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We his soldiers through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love, the covenant of Yahweh, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, which is an anointed one of salvation, our creator. First Timothy chapter four through um, verse one through nine. And it's the last one precepts to get the understanding to cut it off. Now the spirit speak of expressively, expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which Yahweh hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So they gonna, they want you to be cut off from, from his glory and they want you to be seduced by their vanities, by the doctrines of men, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. But we must cut them off and come into the knowledge of truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of Yahweh and prayer is separated. So we're going to be cut off by the, his word, which is a good thing. If thou put the brethren in, re in remembrance of these things. Thou shalt be a good minister of salvation, the anointed, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse, cut off the profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercises, for bodily exercise, profit little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, have, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is faithful. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept, acceptation. Acceptation. And I hope you was highly edified on the precepts that was given tonight on cut it off because we got a lot of work to do and a lot of cutting the fat back off. And I would like to say Shalom.